Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you for invitation. I will be granting. If you do SOP, you should be very cautious. You very you should be very scientific. Uh, apart from the hairs, uh, there will be, have been different different drawbacks. I am not a great oncologist, uh, uh, but I translated article devoted to site aesthetics. Nitrile gloves can't uh, protect from transdermal contamination. They are to be from rubber. Responsibility. Uh, I have to uh, put, I have to say unpleasant things. Uh, why are we to talk about responsibility of a nurse? Because we have entered the world and we are being watched not only by our colleagues and administrators, but all the uh, legal authorities. We are in the epoch of the uh, legal environment. When we start answer for our deeds, uh, we are under the influence of the law and we are responsible for infringement of the law. We work in the uh, the responsibility, dear colleagues, in the document that every medical worker is to read from beginning to end, not just take this uh, uh, book and read from beginning to end. Let's start from very simple things. When we talk about law, we shall understand that every word that we pronounce has certain legal meaning. Uh, sometimes you use a great number of words not understanding its meaning, and you use them incorrectly. My favorite question, who can give the definition who is a medical worker? Uh, we uh, sometimes say medical workers, uh, they have their salary raised. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Who is a medical worker? It's a person with a medical education. Can one be a medical worker without medical education? No. Uh, may you have a medical education but not work as a medical worker? Is it possible? Uh, at least uh, there should be two conditions to be observed, to have a medical education and to work in a medical establishment. You are incorrect by 50%. To talk language, you need to learn basic words. Please don't photo anything uh, because everything is quoting from the law. Uh, we provide medical care. It's a complex of measures that involve medical services. Do you like it? You may like it or not, it's true. A medical service, it's a medical intervention that may include prevention, rehabilitation, and so on. Let's go on further. Medical intervention is a familiar word. Uh, these are uh, the medical intervention can be done only by medical workers uh, with the right to provide medical care. Do you understand this uh, nurse? does medical procedures, manipulations. Any manipulation is a medical intervention. Uh, medical intervention, medical service, and medical care, these things are equal. I understand that you have Tired. Please finish the phrase during the treatment in the hospital. Who is responsible? Who is in charge of a person, of a patient? You are not right. A medical worker, but we don't know who. Treatment. Well, let's uh, look at the definition of medical treatment. 
Uh, the treatment is very important. It's a complex of interventions we know that is done uh, due to a prescription of a medical worker. We don't know who. The goal of this to relieve uh, the symptoms or conditions to restore or improvement of the health, uh, workability, and quality of life. Uh, we don't have here the cure of the disease. And if one doesn't understand this definition, it may entail 50% of complaints against medical workers. A little bit over 50, you try to relieve my symptoms and I say, oh no, guys, you are not right and I start to write complaint. So remember that juridically, legally, it does not mean cure. And most of them, so let's, let's understand who the medical staff is, because legal legal notion is not like nurse or physician, it's just medical worker. So it's the medical worker who is in charge of this. It's a physical person, so it's a person who has some medical or some other education. So to be a medical worker, you need to meet three requirements, to have some education. So according to the definition, you can have not only this education to be a medical worker. For example, do you know uh, this uh, occupation instructor of uh, physical uh, of physical exercises those are teachers no not medical workers also the medical students who can be nurses three four years are not the educational uh, workers but they are not medical workers. The second condition, you need to work in medical organization. It seems logical. Do you remember several years ago, we had this severe case for nurses of schools and kinders gardens. So they were nurses, but schools are not medical institutions. They cannot provide medical care. And those people working there, they cannot have the benefits. And when they say, they call us and they say, find us a good nurse. And we need a nurse for some uh, exercise complex. So in swimming pool, we don't have nurses. And the third obstacle, so the medical worker has in his responsibilities providing medical care. So chief nurse, is she a medical worker? You are chief um, uh, nurse, Irina Valerina. Are you a medical worker? I feel lost. I don't, uh, I don't know if she's a medical worker. To answer this question, we need to read the instruction. And it says something about staff, organization, control. And those are, this is not medical service. So the judge may say, no, the two points are OK, but the third is not. So read the documents, colleagues. So we now are in the legal regulation of the profession. We have complaints. We have about 70% of all the complaints unbased. Actually, the lawyers say that if you talked to patients, we could avoid 70% of the complaints. So I was asked not to talk how to behave, but how to be punished. So colleagues, we don't have this notion of medical mistake. It's the biggest gap of legal regulation for medicine. The, oh, the one who does nothing does not make mistake. Everyone has mistakes. But the colleagues judging us, they say it happens. Yeah, it was subcutaneously. I don't know. It could lead necrosis. It's horrible, but it happens. It's inevitable. 
The judge does not understand that. Any mistake must be punished. The main goal, and I quoted the deputy minister, the main goal is to prove to our legal system that medical mistake can exist, but meanwhile it does not exist. So the only good definition is the voluntary, the willingly, the good will mistake that meant good, but something went wrong. We acted correctly, but we failed. I introduced the medication according to the indications, but the patient had an epileptic shock and he died. It was not my fault, but I can be punished for that. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's skip this. In our country, we don't have any medical mistakes. You know that. We don't have post-surgical abscesses, phlebitis. Yeah, of course, it's good to talk to foreign colleagues. We had this reduction for five to six, uh, to four. And we say we are zero. We have zero. You know why? Because in our country, when we find a mistake, what we need to do to the patient who, to, to the person who has made a mistake, it was published about half a year ago. The report about the mistakes for the recent, for the latest three years. The leading clinic, they said that there were eight amputations of healthy organs. They have made it. And they say, yeah, we have. We are afraid. We use the foreign data. I'm interested in that blue figure, the fourth part, one fourth. Those are the mistakes of medical care. We are not working about medical care. We will talk about theoretical notion of mistake. They, but they gave this definition in 1971. Of course, we can use it as reference, but the charges, they don't accept it correctly. Okay, colleagues, once again, we don't have any mistakes. And we are there, trapped between the two notions. It's guilty and unguilty causing harm. You can cause harm without willing and lots of iatrogenic things, lots of side effects. So we, we, we mean good. We saved him, but he's left with cirrhosis. It's harm, but it's unguilty, the guilty harm. Actually, we are punished for everyone. So it's willing and unwilling. For example, I've got my mother-in-law and I've got a good memory. But, you know, medical personnel, they don't like to cause harm willingly. So usually it's unwilling. So you don't have more than law. You will never understand this joy and this happiness. Okay, dear colleagues, let's keep Buretia. Okay, that's the cherry on the cake. So, and we're going to work seriously. Just pay attention to the screenshot from one of the journals for lawyers while we are just have, have an entertainment. Our lawyers publish these things. This article is dedicated to the investigation tactics by police. What questions we need to ask to confuse him? What, what terms they have? They even have special courses. And it's easy. Either we learn how to respect the law or we have the next conference from the prison. What can we be punished for? There was a very nice character. He said, respect to the law. Three to three is very important to read. You need to read something that you can be punished for. The most horrible article is 109. It's causing of death. That means that due to our actions, try to understand them with your tiring, with your tiring, tired mind. They are difficult. 
First of all, it's easy to hear but difficult to believe in. The judge is not interested in finding the truth. The judge is not interested in the truth. It only compares the proofs by the sides. The judge doesn't have medical education, especially your experience. He has two papers, what it should be and what happened. If they have some something in common, if they do not have anything in common, you are guilty. You can try to prove it that I was told to do so, the chief nurse that we have tradition, the judge doesn't care. We have the law, we need to follow the law. If you do not follow it, you are guilty. First, second, the judge works based on the consequences. There is a wonderful joke. Uh, anti-vaccinators like it. So my father died after the inoculation. Was it anaphylactic shock? No, he was poisoned with pickles. So there should be link between your action and the consequences. If it exists, you are guilty. If it is not, if the catheter is set wrongly, and it leads to embolia. So there is this link and you will be punished. What can we be punished with? So it's the cause of death due to your, uh, maybe due to your mistake. Someone dropped a sandwich into your statostatic and died because of the tattoo. It's the imprisoning up to three years. There are lots of suits against medical workers, but it exists up to three years. If you've killed two people, but don't be so sad. So while I was working, I was working in the maternity home and I was a witness of uh, so I, I saw a nurse when uh, due to the mistake the nurse had her patient her newborn patient died so actually it was not the willing cause uh, of death so actually the law says what is the mistake it's completely or partially actions that do not meet the requirements so those are the extraction instructions that have the great role because if you have the guidelines that are the best the judge will read the instructions, the governmental instructions. So actually, we had the case working with cytostatic. And as far as I remember, chlorine is not used. So you may say that in the latest article, but they can get this rule by 1964 and imprison you due to it. OK some harm to the patient's health. It's also very frequent. So it's imprisoning up to four years, A deprivation of the right to do something. It's also an article. We can be deprived of this right to work according to our specialty. So this severe harm, it's not the figure of speech. Actually, they, they think that everything is severe. I suffer. The harm is severe. Actually, it's very well determined by the law. So look attentively what is important for us. Abortion is important for us because our actions for example, overdosing of something can lead to the cessation of pregnancy. Also, there is ugliness of face. 
it's not such a frequent thing that seems to be for our patients. HIV infection actually colleagues. It happens. It can happen. So according to Article 1 to 2, it's the fourth point when the patient is infected due to inappropriate appliance of professional duties. It's up to five years. Yesterday we pre presented in Vologda with Irina Gusova, who looked at me and she just escaped because she had the same lecture. And we had the epidemiologist who said that there were three cases registered when it was professionally infected. So it seems to be very well developed. Now we should, we should whisper. According to this article, we can imprison half of us. You know why? Because starting with the point when we have pharmacological abortion, almost all workers of fertile period, when we had this abortion, in case of unwilling pregnancy, you can go to the pharmacy, buy some pills, take it, and it is called illegal abortion. And we've got some special article if you don't have some profiled specialty. Is it clear? Everyone can be imprisoned for that and pay attention to the fact. It's not the harm, it's the base. If you have fine of 80,000 rubles, you're lucky. So colleagues, it's very important to understand why we suffer for. It's impossibility to deny the medical assistance. So most of you are nurses, right? So in the operator, we don't ask with the video operator. So you are in shift in the evening, and he says, "I've got some suppression in my chest." Your actions. Oh, you cannot use uh, some curses. Okay, can you translate it into Russian honest? I don't know what to do. I'll ask for the doctor. He's got a bigger salary. You're probably from the big cities. So in a small city, there is one nurse for 200 patients. Your actions all night is just ahead. I feel sad. Read the second point. That's why I read. You need to read the law. I can make mistakes. Don't trust anyone but the documents. Read the second point. It's emergency. It's emergency that can be emergency. I've got some chest pain. Well, maybe is a is a but it can be acute coronary syndrome that will lead to my death. It's emergency. The assistance can be applied by medical imp uh, organization and medical worker. Well, actually, even in private clinic, you can provide this assistance. It is not written by the physician. It's written by a medical worker. And if the patient dies, the judge will decide if you could, if you are a medical worker, if you could provide this and you did not, you are guilty of the patient's death. Just listen attentively. I am an open person and sometimes I'm cruel. I graduated from the institution in 1984. I, I had a nurse specialty in my diploma. I was working in emergency and I was a paramedic and I had been working there for 18 years and I was a chief paramedic. I used all the medications and I provide, provided assistance in all the conditions you can only imagine. Having only nursing diploma, nurse certificate, 
So the modern nurse knows quite little in emergency. So when you get your certificate, pay attention to this situation in case of emergency. In case of emergency, you must work independently. Otherwise, you will have another crime. I hope you've heard me. According to the law, you must provide this assistant. So if not, a fine of 4,000 rubles will be just a luck for you. But you can be imprisoned. As for the first aid, it's another nice topic. So as for the standard. But you've got some special seminar according to drugs. I just want to remind that any actions with drugs, Alexina Kriniak, the doctor, didn't want to sell drugs because it was just half an ampule of Keterol. She wanted to use it to her old dog. And she got imprisoned despite her age and her position. Have special attention to this drug article. And this article is also important for us. Because each time when you're in your leisure time, you have, uh, you, you, you just have a short to your neighbor because there is a queue in the clinic. It's illegal medical work. And it's some additional work just on the way home. It's just some separate article. And the fact is a legal action is a crime itself. And if you cause harm, not severe harm, even slight harm, up to three years of imprisonment. After, uh, after injection abscess, I will have a, mis uh, a miracle for you, for you. So the complications, they get reduced. So if, to, if after your intervention, the patient addresses some uh, so, some lawyer, you will have this crime. Все санны пить правила вообще все. Напишите мне, я очень хочу хотя бы одним глазом посмотреть. Нет таких, потому что there are no rules. It's impossible to follow all the rules if you break sanitary regulations as the results uh, you will see some contaminations, kindergarten contamination and if a person dies it's imprisonment up to five years and the last slide from this presentation uh, the slide this in principle for doctors and for nurses not just read but uh, learn by heart all the uh, court cases uh, this article negligence negligence or uh, negligence or for duties and responsibilities medical workers uh, they are not administrators. Uh, the head nurse, she is administrator. Uh, the station, the nurse at the station is not. Negligence to your duties. Any uh, breaking of rules, non-compliance with algorithm may be considered as negligence and uh, courts like this. Do you have any questions? Uh, from the Institute uh, of Oncology by Petrovki. May I have, uh, can I can I uh, give a medical care in the street? Yes, you can, but uh, 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 you must. If you don't want, you must not. Uh, there is a dispute between two lawyers. 
Paulina Gabaeva and Ivan Pacherin. They experience lawyers and they have different uh, different understanding. You are medical workers when you are on duty. Out of your work, you are just citizens uh, with medical edu edu education. Uh, the requirements uh, that are applied to medical workers are not applicable to you. You can provide medical care. With the first aid, mostly it's uh, trauma. There are no drugs here. You have the right, but it's not your duty. But there is the article that one can be prosecuted if one leaves a person in danger. If you pass the bar without stopping, you may be prosecuted. Uh, but if you stop, if you call for ambulance, uh, you performed your duties. One more question. There is one, uh, there are different kind of disputes. A patient to a person, a person uh, felt ill on the bus stop close to the establishment. I have a great number of minuses. I am the author of the Ethical Code of a Nurse of Russia. Sometimes I give lectures on ethics. Ethics usually in conflict with the law. If a patient dies outside of the medical establishment, the medical establishment doesn't care responsibility, uh, care responsibility for this person. Uh, this is uh, the ethics and uh, the law in conflict, because ethically you should help this person. If, for example, there is a discrepancy between uh, the prescription of a doctor and the leaflet, you should draw attention to a doctor. Uh, there may be off-label administration of drugs, Sometimes a clever doctor uses uh, the information that is not included into the leaflet. You may approach the doctor and you may draw his attention to the mistake that has been made. In my practice, I have the case and I was asked to introduce 10 milliliters in bolus of uh, hung, uh, Hungarian draw peridol. I uh, draw, I draw, uh, the, I filled the syringe with this drug. I take, uh, give this syringe to the doctor and said that if you wanted to kill a patient, do it yourself. I am not going to do this. It's ethically to refuse to carry out absurd administration made by a doctor. Indirect uh, heart cardiac massage, uh, for example, uh, in the hospital there is no doctor, can we do defibrillation or introduce adrenaline? Do we have the right or not? If I don't have a doctor, a doctor some, somewhere else, there is uh, a word. A useful advice. There are two magic words. Uh, you must and you don't have the right. And please remember these words and you have to react simi similarly. Uh, you are said uh, that you don't have the right to introduce adrenaline. Please, sir, uh, ask where it's shown. You are to provide emergency medical help. 
Федерация Федерации 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 we were recording by guideline 2015. A week ago, the European Union published guideline of the 2020 the draft guideline. Uh, we downloaded these guidelines, and uh, there are interesting things uh, stipulated there. Uh, you can introduce adrenaline, inject adrenaline. Uh, because the medical help is provided by a medical worker. Intervention, it's not a legal entity. Once again, dependent or independent intervention is methodology of learning. We use uh, another words, medical intervention, medical service, medical help. These notions, they are legal notions, legal entities. The law requires to provide medical help in emergency situations. Thank you, Valery. There are a great number of questions, so we may continue discussion endlessly. Unfortunately, we are behind the time. I have a question because you are an expert in our country. Uh, 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 according to certificates uh, for, for nurses. How certificates are different from those uh, that are granted to uh, granted uh, to nurses uh, in one place and those uh, that I brought? I am like a father first. Give me one there. One certificate, dear colleagues. Please be attentive. The system of lifelong learning is stipulated in the law. Uh, you are to go for repeated accreditation according to the scores you collected. And the right certificate I am holding in my hands. You will receive this kind of paper. The majority of you has uh, this certificate. You can uh, have this electronically. Here there is uh, the personal individual code. Each certificate has its own code. You have to enter this code. Uh, on the site, <laughs> yesterday I gave this talk. You may uh, please enter the presentation. I gave the lecture in uh, the town of Vologda. Once again, dear colleagues, don't believe to anybody. You should believe to the documents, and let's look at the documents. Everything is related to certification. I will show only the most important things. Let's look.
We are talking about uh, the primary accreditation. Primary accreditation we went through during the previous year. Now we are talking about the secondary or repeated accreditation. It was started since 2021. It has two stages, uh, testing and uh, evaluation of portfolio that reflects lifelong learning in medicine. You will receive this kind of document. And let's read this document. The first document that you are to be knowledgeable of, it's uh, this order uh, that 1043 uh, about the terms of a presentation. Uh, then fourth, since 2019, it's a bachelor degree. Uh, since 2020, the primary specialized uh, uh, certification. And since 2021, you will be at the phase six. Persons who didn't go through accreditation before uh, uh, should know this document. Lifelong learning is stipulated in the law devoted to education. Uh, there is uh, the article number 82. It's a lifelong learning uh, during the learning during the whole life. Then the document that issued by the Ministry of Health, the Order 334N, accreditation of a, an expert, uh, of a specialist, as a kind of uh, permission to work in the profession. It's done. Uh, within uh, uh, it's done within uh, uh, it's done uh, to a pe to a people who are graduated and who are uh, gone through who went through accreditation and who are certified uh, uh, secondary accreditation evaluation of the portfolio and uh, testing. And you will sit for tests uh, in the internet, in the portal. Portfolio, the portfolio can be downloaded from the internet or borrowed from your friend. The Ministry of Health started to develop the draft law. I wrote this, I prepared this presentation in April. And later, the news sir, arrived for additional development or working out or working on this document. The system that you will be given. It's uh, 50 credits annually. Today you will have six credits, 36 credits at the level of the college, and 14 at uh, seminars, training, webinars, and uh, on your self-learning uh, of electronic modules. And there will be the list of uh, lecturers uh, who will be given this uh, electronic education to you on the internet. You have very beautiful phones. Uh, uh, this is uh, the document issued by the Ministry of Health about the lifelong learning. By the year of 2021, in the lifelong learning system, 90% of medical workers will participate in this system, uh, state and private services. Why not 100? Because we have the remote areas in the north where there is no the internet access. This portal uh, you have to be dreamed of every night. You enter this. There is the second portal, portal, portal that is uh, called the Council of Lifelong Learning. And I entered the dates. Uh, uh, 
there are different days for master classes. The regional conference in the city of Petrozavodsk, uh, in, Vlad in the city of Vladimir. You can see from the first row on the 20th of June, uh, the section of the nurses in oncology. It's our conference. It's uh, accredited on the site. It's an old version, and uh, you should and you should come to this portal. Uh, this port, uh, this version, has been opened yesterday. I don't have the time to prove. Believe my words. The Council of Lifelong Learning is for people with their higher education, for the uh, medical, for the um, uh, for people with the medical education, uh, not higher education, but uh, secondary level education. Uh, everything is placed on this portal. Where you shall enter the code. Don't photograph anything. You enter the your ID. I am not a medical worker. You will receive a notification about your personal account. And this notification will have a login and the password. You should remember your password. We entered the system. Some data are, uh, are obscured because they are personal data. And everything is connected to the Federal Register. Pressing the button uh, virtual tour, there are some tips. You can download everything. The portal of lifelong learning you have registered. And this, uh, this is uh, the list of your actions. I mentioned 250 hours. It's a necessary amount of hours. Then we skip some slides and I'll answer a question. You will open the list. It's a separate, beautiful function. When you choose uh, the event, you press the button that says add the elements you find uh, the event. In St. Petersburg, no educational program is registered. Sorry, colleagues, it's a question to the system of education. Please uh, learn in correspondence. We check the program and we shall enter the code. If you want to introduce the event, you can include it into the plan in the future or just to introduce the code, the code from the certificate. We had some certificate, we press write the code, we've got special window where we copy the code of certificate and then we press verify the code and you've got it into your portfolio. And now here not to do it twice. So these are the certificates. Sometimes we make them colorful to the portfolio. That's the portfolio. You will take it from over there. You see a link. So it's a fresh presentation. You see its portfolio. And everything that you introduce there is written there in the portal and when the term is ready you pick up the specialty and you've got this document where it's written how many 
uh, balls, how many points she has, and what's the percentage of her individual plan. There is still one button absent sent to the accreditation committee, not to print it, but just to send it there. So why this event is absent here? Don't get scared. The portal was opened on the day after, to, uh, after yesterday. So send this presentation to everyone. So it had to be open on the 20th of May. See, the specialist didn't have time to write down the events, and the last event was on the 27th of May, and everything else is not depicted, but it will be written in the, the soon as possible.